Hello my boils, my ghouls, and my zools. I'm back from Kalashnikon. And that shit'll fuck you up. Hello my boils, my ghouls, my zools, my fools, with the tools, welcome back to Kalashkamaz. I am Goblin, some of you know me as John. Oh my god, what a match this year. So, they made the rule set a little more difficult. They definitely added in some um, brutality into the match. So, I think before we get into it, I need to freshen up a little bit. Mmm. Much better. And now that I look like a businessman, I think it's time to announce business. Business. The best way you can support this channel, and that's going to be Vitamin K Labs. So head over to vitaminklabs.com or Vitamin K Labs on Instagram. Pick yourself up a Gucci grip. Lot more products coming soon. So now that we have the very important business out of the way, and I'm looking like a businessman. Let's loosen up a little bit and talk about KCON. And now that I've stripped off the jacket and look like a circa 1985 Northrop Grumman worker, it's no better time to talk about falling down than now, because boy will KCON make you eat shit. This year, not only did they up the level of competition with the difficulty of the match itself, they also increased the difficulty of the rules, and holy shit, this match has never seen so many tough competitors than this year. So to go further a little more into KCON before we get into the M90, this year the Friday stages were team stages. I did not compete, I actually chose to hang out, film all day, check out other people's runs, and just kind of absorb the match a little bit, absorb the town a little bit, see what it's like just to not be so busy. But unfortunately, the rest of the weekend, I didn't really get that opportunity because as a new business, Vitamin K Labs, we actually sponsored KCON this year, so got a little busy here and there. I was trying to get some promo material for y'all, and also, I did skip out on a stage to go help setting up prizes, so that did happen. So you can guess, I didn't really look at my scores this year, but wasn't really there to actually like get a score. Everybody else was there just game face on. I was actually just there to fuck around this year. So I actually like to do competitions two different ways personally, and KCON is a perfect opportunity for something like that and a perfect opportunity for someone like me. There is no armored division. I have actually been pushing for that, but KCON is essentially three different matches over three different days. Your Friday stage is usually an extra day that's like either a night stage or a team match. This year it was a team match again. And Saturday and Sunday are both on practice score as two separate matches. So basically you have three matches on practice score every year for KCON. Basically my two ways to compete are LARP real fucking hard or game face day. I chose to do both since we had an opportunity to do that at KCON this year. My first day, I went straight LARP action with the Serbian PJP. Let's go! Mag!
Pick up a... Oh, shit. There you go. And I'll be having a surplus stash episode coming up on this whole outfit as a lot of people found it very contentious when I said it was from Arcan Tigers. I misspoke a little bit on Clay's video. It's not a full Arcan Tigers outfit. It's a PJP outfit, which is Serbian police at the time. The vest itself is what people are tripping about because the vest came from Arcan Tigers. And if you notice, it is not green. It's actually blue. And the story on that one is coming up in Surplus Stash. Outside of the difficulty of the match being increased this year, as well as the difficulty of the rule set, there was also an up in the competition. Holy shit. This year, we had Clayco 47, Texas Kalashnikov, Combat Encountant, Neil Vermillion, AK Mario, that's SOF defense. We had Bolts and Hose, and dude, Big Papa Fluffy came through this year and fucking wrecked it, man. It's like his fourth match, and he goddamn wrecked it. Myself, I wore historically matching gear and fucked my scores up, but that's not actually why I went this year, man. I just wanted to go have a lot of fun, do the stages the best I can in some historical gear, which is extremely difficult and why I'm really pushing for them to do a reenactor class to at least give a little balance to people that choose to do that and encourage people to kit up now and again because bringing out kits just plain fun. You know, you don't always have to do this, you know, I want to train how I fight or, you know, whatever you're saying is. I want to compete how I train and train how I fight. You know, people have these different sayings towards it. You're allowed to just dress up and have fun. That's a thing as well. So I like to encourage that because straight up, I mean, countries that use ARs don't have the most interesting surplus. It's only really now that they do, now that every country's adopting ARs. But I mean, for real, historically, countries that adopted the AK as a service weapon, they just plain have cool surplus. Let's get real. Friday stages. I did not compete in the Friday stages. I actually chose to just walk around, absorb the match, film other people's runs, and really just get a sense of, you know, how the match was this year, and, you know, being that there were so many new KCON competitors, just really get a feel of, you know, what's the culture this year, because KCON, like every match, has its own culture, and I was so curious how our other matches culture bled into KCON, and boy, it just fit like puzzle pieces. It was fantastic, man. You know, we got a lot of people that are coming from like KB kind of culture, a lot of people that are coming from that Red October kind of culture, which is, you know, that's a difference of, you know, like super hard party people and like, you know, a lot of Jersey boys, which, you know, for some reason is the weirdest complaint that was very, very apparent this year. And to be honest with you, give my two cents on the whole Jersey shooter thing. I don't think you should just look at them as, you know, I got my match paid for, I'm going to sweep these prizes and fuck off type of people. It doesn't mean they are not part of the community. Sometimes it does. I don't really like that either. Nobody likes when people from outside the community come in, just take shit and leave. It's not, I mean, but luckily that's a minority of Jersey shooters. It really is. Yes, it does happen that companies, you know, they'll pay someone to go out there, get you, you know, like your ringer in there to go sweep some prizes, get their advertisement out there. Very rarely does that happen. When you talk to the guys from IWI and see their, their sponsored shooters, those guys are AK guys for sure. You know, you go see uh, Pro 2 Customs, those are AK guys for sure. You know, you don't have to be intimidated by very high level shooters that just happen to be wearing a jersey. And what I mean by that is it's not always some crazy paid for high level shooter with a huge ego that came in there just to do their job and fuck off. You know, sometimes it might be something like Zima Warriors, which is just a group of people that came together to share some expenses in travel, boarding, ammo, gear, and all of that, going to places like KCON. Uh, Zima means winter in Russian and many Slavic languages, so 
So basically, all it is is just a shooting group that started at Winter KCON, and we stuck together. I understand I'm giving you a bit of a ramble about KCON, but I honestly believe that Fit and Fire and Clayco 47's videos for KCON this year were so sufficient to give you a nice rounding of the matches. I just wanted to talk about a few other things, like my personal experience for once, because I usually just run through these stages to kind of give you a round out about the stages. We don't really actually talk about the match and the culture of the match itself very much. So really, let's get the negatives out of the way first and just, just wipe that. So I think about everybody's gripe this year was stage guns. And, you know, I, I agree with that gripe, frankly. I really do. And let me tell you why. Lately with matches, I think we all know, I've traveled a bit for matches and, you know, seen a bit of the country with these matches, got a round out about the different AK cultures. And one thing I have noticed is that they're given a little bit more a rule of the roost to, uh, to the sponsors lately. And, you know, I don't really like that. You know, I really don't. I don't believe that a stage gun should ever be on the clock, whether it be from a sponsor or just a random donated stage gun. And there's a few reasons for that. Uh, being that if it's a sponsor giving the stage gun, I don't like paying to be advertised to. I don't think you should ever be advertised to on the clock. That's not fair. Uh, also, you know, whether it be from a sponsor or just a randomly donated stage gun, a lot of these times these stage guns don't work very well or can't stand up to the abuse of a few hundred shooters. And that's a real problem. This year we had multiple stage guns and also I personally have a problem with that. It's becoming that so many matches you are fucking with props fucking with stage guns, it's getting annoying. And that was one of my main gripes about Thunder on the Tundra and why I didn't do a video on Thunder on the Tundra at all. I didn't like the match, frankly, and I'm gonna tell the truth about that. Now, I don't have a problem talking about that because it's my worst example of what I'm talking about and the entire reason why I didn't even do a Thunder on the Tundra video, and I can be completely honest about it. Some of it I didn't talk about due to sportsmanship because I personally had some other issues with that match. But the actual issues that we could talk about constructively with that match... There were multiple, multiple stages, and in fact, the majority of stages, it took us over an hour, sometimes two hours, in between our stages. And that was due to resets, that was due to stages breaking, that was due to stage guns and stage props. Essentially, it was just plain out annoying. It was two days of sitting in the heat, waiting around to shoot, and, um, you know, honestly, kind of a bummer. So, um, that comes down to the quintessential exact thing I hate about a match. Fucking with stage props all day. I come out to a match to shoot my AK. I do AK matches to shoot my AK. And when they give sponsors the rule of the roost, man, stupid stuff happens. You know, um, frankly, I thought having a high point, a high point was a sponsor this year at KCON. I thought high point having a stage gun like that would have been pretty funny, pretty fun. The company itself knows they're a meme. They know about all this. I thought it was funny myself. A lot of people couldn't even get the fucking mag in and get it charged correctly because you really have to slam the mag in on those carbines. You really have to give it a rack. You know, it's not just a little beep beep. Uh, you got to slap that thing back. And um, you had to engage a, a ray of poppers out the window of the old free ammo van that you see in every KCON video. And every time you missed a popper, it was a 30 second penalty. Brutal penalties like that are welcomed, except when most of us have never shot a high point carbine, a lot of us are not pistol shooters inherently. And literally missing one target can cost you your entire day. I think that's a little brutal and a little unforgiving when you put up an array of, say, 10 poppers and each one has a 30 second penalty. thought that was a bit excessive because, you know, you're missing multiple. Chances are you're going to get a 30 second penalty and fuck your day up anyway, but fucking your day up over missing one shot? I thought that was just a little much, personally. But 
I do like things like that here and there, you know, if you get the pars long enough and actually work it, you can have brutal penalties like that. It's just, there's only one reason I believe that's a problem. Um, you know, it's not a problem for me personally. I, I like a brutal penalty personally, but I think it's a little brutal for the new shooters. I think it's a little brutal for uh, getting people to come out to these matches because, you know, if, if you hear something like there's an array and every single miss is a 30-second penalty, so, you know, it's just like, you know, every single miss is days done, days done, days done. And when it's coupled with the fact that that, a uh, penalty is tied to something that we don't inherently do in the AK community, which is either pistol shooting, which I do encourage. People need to shoot their pistols more, get better at their pistols. Um, it's also tied to stage guns. And so one stage I did really like this year that did have a stage prop, you had to carry an 80 pound bag and run from point to point like it's a brutality match. and pretty much goddamn three quarters of that match either dropped the bag or fell flat on their face, including me. So, <laughs> but I do like the physicality of that. That's the kind of difficulty I like. That's the kind of difficulty I like. Now, I was subject to one of the new penalties this year, and one of those is if you drop a mag, you used to be able to just pick it up, stuff it, take your shots, keep going, whatever, or take your shots, pick it up, stuff it, keep going. As long as when you left that shooting area, you had that magazine on you, you were good. This year, they instituted a thing where if you dropped a mag, took a shot, before you picked it up and retained it, it was a penalty, and it didn't matter whether you moved on or not. If you took the shot and then picked it up, it was a penalty. That's fine. I personally didn't see it in the rules, so, you know, sucked that I got subject to that. So I kind of fucked myself by not reading that there was an updated rule set this year. And also, I didn't do the team stages, so I didn't hear them mention it that first day. And unfortunately, the second day, they just kind of ran through the rules real quick. So I'm guilty of not actually reading them on the actual practice score and getting the updated rule set. I am guilty of just going, oh, it's KCON, I know the rules been doing this a little bit so they do update rules beware this does happen at matches um you know and really uh that does tie into uh the only other criticism i have about kcon itself is that i think its own rule set is starting to stifle it a little bit in the past it's what made the match in the future, I'd actually like to see it move on a little bit from some of these and actually just kind of open up to a more standardized rule set that every other match does. I personally actually do like retaining the mags. I actually think it's pretty fun, but I personally believe that it is time to move on from that. That's about one of my only constructive criticisms about it. I just think that maybe, um, it would speed the match up quite a bit not having to do this because I've heard matched uh, the ROs in the past say, you know, yeah, but then we have people, you know, about fucking losing their mags, all those and this and that. It's literally not a problem in any other match. So I think it's time to maybe just let people fly free and get some speed and run. Um, that's what I mean by that. I love retaining the mags. The difficulty's cool, but it would overall speed the flow up if people could just fly free, you know. And, um, you know, maybe even open squatting might help that kind of match because there's only 100 shooters and that, that, that might even allow them to fit in like 150, you know, because it's just not a thing that kicking mags takes more time on the stages. It actually makes the stages take longer when people have to retain them because, uh, let's get frank, not everybody trains for these matches. A lot of people just come out to have fun and that's okay. That's what these matches are for. There's, there, to me, there are only for two things. Get a score or come out and have fun. You're allowed to do both. I mean, you're completely allowed to do both. You don't have to go for a score, and that's completely fine. You can try for last if you want to try to get that last place score. I mean, seriously, it's your match to shoot how you like. But, um, yeah, I, I do think there are a few things that, that I even like doing that I think would benefit the match if we dropped. And really, that's that's about all I could say that's um, 
you know, it's just constructive criticism I'm trying to have, you know, and, uh, you know, that does tie into the last stage that we did that was extremely problematic as far as competition goes on whether you were there to have fun or get a score because I truly believe that every stage at every match should be kind of designed for both of those things. And unfortunately, the last stage, it was a fun stage, but it was not a competitive stage whatsoever. And it really didn't teach you any drilling. It really didn't, um, you know, give you any experience that you can't have at any other match or any other stage or anything like that. So let me explain why. I personally liked the stage and thought it was fun, but what I didn't like about it is that it was all on the clock, and what you had to do was not use your gun at all. You had to use a sponsored gun. So going back to my first comment, I don't like being paid to be advertised to, but it was very nice that we weren't shooting our own ammo, so okay, but it was only 20 rounds and it was out of select fire AKs, all on the clock. AKs that people have never run before, they don't know the zero, they don't know the holdovers, and we gotta shoot 200 yards with these things. Some people having never fired a machine gun before. And, you know, it's just a little strange to me that they chose to let that happen. Because, you know, you had to basically move to an array of three targets, give it a small burst, at the end you had to hit a 200 yard, and then your time was done and you could do whatever the fuck you want with the rest of that ammo, so everybody pretty much dumped the rest of it out of the uh, full auto setting on whichever AK they chose. Um, now why I thought it was bullshit goes back to Red October last year. The most bullshit stage out of Red October last year, and it's a straight complaint. Make no mistakes about it, I'm complaining right now about this. There was a stage where you had to shoot a sponsored uh, sponsor's gun, and they charged us an extra $100 that year claiming that the extra ammo for the stage guns was very expensive. We ended up shooting five rounds out of a sponsor's gun, which all it was was a piston-driven AR, and then one round of 38 special. Now to wrap this up, I understand that, you know, when you have no news, that's a kind of a clickbaity title for a update video on the M90, but like I said, no news is good news, so I think the only way we can really wrap this up is talk about the award ceremony, which was absolutely incredible, one of the best KCON award ceremonies there ever has been. So. Between our squad, squad one, and Clay's squad, squad three, we literally took the entire placement of the match and the entire prize table, which just happened to be random draw. So there was actually very few people outside of our squad that happened to get any prizes. It was kind of weird. Damn near looking rigged, man. Really, this was an award ceremony like no other KCON, and I couldn't go any farther without talking about Neil Vermillion and AK Mario. I mean, they are from this community, they are built from this community, and they swept the match. They are such incredible shooters, you really want to get the inside of a just fucking amazing shooter and how they put together things in their head when they're playing in a stage and how they execute that. Those are the kind of people you want to talk to. I couldn't go any farther without congratulating Bolts and Holes, Kyle. We just, a lot of us just met him for the first time this year. And his, the whole story with the guy, so incredible. We loved him off the bat. Incredible shooter. Absolutely great job. Congratulations, buddy. So, outside of him, man, I only got a short little list of notes because... I wanted to get you guys something here, and you know, I just wanted to really not make a full KCON video, not make a full M90 video, not make a full AK culture video, AK community video. I wanted to talk a little bit about everything, because that's kind of how this past few weeks has been for a lot of people in the AK community. It's just, you know, a lot of us have been everywhere. You want a lot of shit, and there's not one thing you can talk about, because... Speaking of that, you know, we gotta really quickly congratulate Big Papa Fluffy, man. Holy crap did he do well. Clay Creed, holy shit he did so well. Clay Owens, dude, good job on another win, man. Seriously good job. 
really, really, really came through on the community aspect and really, really gave us a great video the other day about KCON. So, dude, go check that video out. Check out Fit and Fire's video, too. He was mopping it up, too, but man, just like everybody at KCON, he was getting his lunch ate. Even the combat account got his lunch ate a couple times here and there. Go check his Instagram to see what I'm talking about. Pretty funny shit. So, So to wrap this whole thing up, we couldn't go any farther without talking about our boy Tomislav, the Carbon R32. He really came through and did one of the sweetest things anybody has ever done in this community. Tango Tactical. He was living in Georgia, talking Russia, Georgia. He had to flee. He is now living in Serbia. And unfortunately, Tango Tactical is currently on a bit of hiatus. So... Tommy took it upon himself to help out Tango Tactical. Got a couple of his denim, uh, denim plate carriers that you may have seen in uh, one of Clay Co. 47's videos. You might have seen it at a Kalash Bash. Uh, you know, people have won them at Kalash Bash or, you know, raffles here and there, unless you maybe just purchased one. So he doesn't have any of his gear. Couldn't continue business. So Tommy arranged to raffle off the last of the Tango Tactical plate carriers. And we were able to actually get enough about halfway there. And at the last minute, Tommy came through with a donation of a couple magazines. Uh, the combat accountant, Neil Vermillion, donated a plum magazine from Ukraine that he picked up personally in Ukraine. I donated a battlefield pickup tanker uniform that came from Ukraine and we were able to actually pull it off and get him the rest of the money he needed to get back in business so I am proud to say good job Tommy I'm so proud of all of us we did it for him man Tommy did it for him and even cooler we've never met him in person not one of us has ever met him in person Tommy's going to deliver this in person in Serbia very soon so how cool is that, man? This is the AK community. This is AK culture. This is what we do for each other. This is how we have fun. This is how we stay safe. And this is the stupid we do.